Takadoriki's Sumo channel is by far and away the most watched on YouTube because it really exposes the chasm between what sumo journalists know and what they're prepared to write. Last week, while Nikkan Sports, Sanke Sports and all their friendly rivals were busy painting pictures of a rosy handover at Takasago Stable, Takatoriki reached straight for his phone, called an ex-Takasago man in Asashoryu's one-time manager, Mr. Yoshida, and tore the mainstream picture of the handover to shreds. Sumo writers had long known that the right to succeed semi-retiring Asashio as coach Takasago would fall to one of the two men working under him. 51-year-old coach Wakamatsu, once a top division regular named Asano Waka, and 39-year-old coach Nishikijima, ex-Sekiwake Asasekiryu. The papers not only half-congratulated the latter on winning through, but even tried to help justify why he did, citing his superior wrestling rank. What they left out, though, was that sumo insiders were heavily tipping Wakamatsu for the job, and were stunned when he failed to get it. As Mr. Yoshida explains, The night before the media announcement, even Wakamatsu himself thought it was done and dusted. He'd been talking at length with Asashio in the presence of his lawyer, and believed he'd shaken hands on a deal. He even went so far as to make a speech to the lower-ranked wrestlers, declaring himself the new Takasago, and asking for their support in the years ahead. So imagine his face when he returns to the stable the next morning, and learns that Asashio has just told everybody Nishikijima is taking over. He's stupefied, so obviously he runs straight to Asashio's room, shouting, what the hell is going on? I thought we agreed this man to man! But all Asashio can sheepishly say is, Well, the thing is, I am not a real man. Takatoriki says he sympathizes with Wakamatsu because his pivotal contribution to the stable has clearly not been rewarded. Starting with Asano Yama, he's been responsible for introducing about 50% of his current students to the Takasago fold often paying for cross-country scouting missions out of his own pocket. Mr. Yoshida confirms he'd also worked tirelessly to raise funds for the Takasago handover. Missing out due to betrayal, yet still having to work there, and under the man he was supposed to manage, must be awful to try and stomach. Both Mr. Yoshida and Takatoriki are careful to stress that Asasekiryu is a decent guy, admirably devoted to the way of sumo, and perfectly qualified to take over as the next Takasago. But, Takatoriki is convinced this story is another sorry example of why Sumo needs the root and branch reform he advocates. The Sumo Association should manage the elder stock, not the individual, he asserts. Exactly, Yoshida chimes in. There should be clear, centrally determined guidelines on the criteria for becoming an elder and stable master. That way, when someone clearly sees they've missed out on a job because the guidelines pointed to someone better, there's no problem. But we have to avoid these farces which see the handover of a major stable remain totally undecided until the night before deadline. Takatoriki then weaves this argument into his general critique of the elder stock system, that it's too expensive to become a coach, and that too many wrestlers are forced to sell bouts to gather the requisite funds. He expands on that in another video, which I'll get onto, but what I'd really like to hear next are his ideas for Sumo's relationship with the press. For every decent reporter on the beat knows everything Takatoriki and Mr. Yoshida have mentioned in this video, but not a single one of them feels able to report it.